And just remember four numbers about cities. 250, 75, and 80. Cities are only 2% of the surface of the planet. They are 50%, 55% of the population, 75% of energy consumption, 80% of CO2 emissions. So it can do something to make our cities a bit more sustainable. That can be a big deal globally. And I want to share with you a project we won in Helsinki recently uh, about decarbonizing district heating. So the mayor launched a global competition similar to an X Prize to actually see how to decarbonize district heating. Usually district heating is good. District heating means you run hot water through the city to heat it. But at the same time, in Helsinki, a lot of the heat comes from coal. And the mayor decided to decommission the power plants, the coal power plants, by the end of the decade. And so he ran this kind of X Prize. We put together a team uh, run by our design office and with uh, big companies, engineering companies, and multinationals. Um, and we won the, the competition. The, the key thing is that if you look at this to the left, you see how fast renewables are going down, which is good news. But there's also bad news, and that's what you see to the right. The bad news is actually if you use renewables, then prices go up and down. Sometimes you produce too much, sometimes you produce too little. Well, you say, what's the problem? You can use storage. And you're right. You can use storage, but today, if you actually store with batteries, one megawatt hour, a one megawatt hour battery will cost you around 200,000 euros or dollars. To produce the megawatt hour will cost you $20 to produce, but 200,000 to store. And then in our case, we said, well, ultimately what we need to do in Helsinki is basically get heat that we can run through the city itself. And so why don't we do something that, as an engineer, you might say, it's a, it's a crime, a thermodynamic crime, which is take energy, electricity, and turn it into heat. If you do that, then the battery, the thermal battery you can use, will cost you not 200,000, but $200. So you store heat with this kind of floating reservoirs. We call them the, the hot heart. You get different sources of energy, get it in, then the hot heart to store it, like a thermal battery, and then you run it through the city to heat it. By doing that, you can get decarbonized energy, so zero footprint. And uh, of course, you need AI in order to run all of this to match production and consumption, but that's you know, getting easier and easier. And if you're doing that, you also want to open it up so the citizens can be part of this. You can see it, you see here. So we decided to create that thing, that infrastructure, not to make it hidden, but also to open up to a broader public. Again, the only way we've got a, a chance to, to change and decarbonize is if we do it together. And again, you know, we, we are testing this in Helsinki, but now we are building the first prototype, but also trying in other cities, hot cities and cold cities. So both in uh, Amsterdam, similar thing, but if you turn the system into, into cooling, you store cold water and you can do it in Dubai, Singapore, on a very hot climate. So let me start by observing that our planet is a feedback system and the temperatures are going up and up and up. We are already outside of the band of uh, climate stability. Now, in a feedback system, it is impossible to keep going slowly towards your objective, hit the brakes um, and stop when you reach your ob uh, objective. In a feedback system, you have to go back and forth. And so one idea we are working on with Carlo and um, a few other colleagues at MIT is something we call space bubbles. The idea is to put um, kind of tiny umbrellas in space and shade the poles to protect them and get them back to, um, to their frozen state. Yeah. Um, and we think that this way we can buy some time so we can figure out how other to do solutions. proper car carbon capture and other solutions. So if we put a few sta space bubbles at very strategic locations, we will be able to shade and protect the poles. That's a, that's a great way to describe it. The point is uh, a lot of people have been looking at shading, reducing a bit of the energy from the sun in order to contrast climate change. Now, the problem is that if you do that, you want two things. You want something that's reversible. Again, you know, if, something, if you put something there, you don't want to put it, for instance, in the atmosphere, because then it's very difficult to remove it if, uh, if, if there's any issue. And you want something that's controllable. So somehow, you know, you can, uh, you can do it. And so the idea was uh, for the first time to try to fabricate this in space and create a little shield with 2% reflected energy from the sun, then that 
would help us eventually, if things were to go out of control, reverse the impact of, uh, of climate change. So hopefully we can discuss this with you and others today in more detail, but uh, we are launching this uh, and we want to do really all the math now and then try the first test of fabrication in space and then clearly scale up.